Okay, in today's video, I'm gonna go over a problem involving two-dimensional projectile motion. And in this video, we wanna determine how far an object moves in the X direction when it is projected from an initial height of 45 meters with an initial velocity in the X direction, that is in the horizontal direction, of uh, has an initial velocity of 37 meters per second. And when that object is projected and it leaves this surface, it's going to follow this nice parabolic path. And as I said, we would like to know how far does the object travel in the x direction, the change in position in the x direction. Now, in order to do this problem, in order to understand this problem, there's a couple things you need to know. First of all, you need to know that the object is moving in the x direction and in the y direction, and it's doing those two things separate from each other, independent from each other. And we need to talk about for just a moment what it's doing in the x and what it's doing in the y direction. In the x direction, the forces are balanced. There are no forces acting on the object in the x direction. And because there are no forces acting on the object in the x direction, you need to know that the acceleration in the x direction is zero meters per second squared. In the y direction, there is one force during this object's path that's acting on this object. There's only one force, and that is the force of gravity. And in the y direction, this object is really experiencing what we call free fall, and therefore, the acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, which is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Keep that in mind, two separate accelerations, two separate motions in the x and the y direction. Now, in order to solve this problem, we're going to have to use our kinematic equations. And therefore, what I like to do first is for the y direction and also for the x direction, write down all five of the variables that are contained in the kinematic equation initial and final velocity, change in position, acceleration, and time. I have that for the y and for the x direction. We're going to fill in what we know, what we don't know, and what we're looking for. Now, we've already been told the acceleration in the x and the y direction. We know those things. The acceleration in the y direction, minus 9.81 meters per second squared. x direction, 0 meters per second squared. The initial velocity in the y direction for free fall motion is 0 meters per second. We were told the initial velocity in the x direction is 37 meters per second. We don't know and we don't need the final velocity in this problem in the y direction. And remember, the initial velocity in the x direction is 37. There's no acceleration. So if there's no acceleration, it's not changing its velocity. So therefore, the final velocity is also 37 meters per second in the x direction. The change in position in the y direction is minus 45. It starts here and it moves down. This direction is the negative, so the change in position is minus 45. Don't forget your negative signs. We're looking, <coughs> excuse me, we're looking for the change in position in the x direction. Now you'll notice here we have the time and the time in the x and the y direction. We don't know either of those. But another important thing that you need to keep in mind for this problem is that the time in the x and the time in the y are the same. Remember, this thing is moving independently in the x and the y direction. The time it takes to travel this portion of its path and the time it takes to travel in the x direction are the same. We want to find the change in position in the x. We need the time in the x. We can't find it. With, with the information that we're giving. But we can solve for the change in time in the y direction, and they're equal. So we're gonna solve for the change in time in the y direction, and then we're gonna use that time as the time in the x direction, because we know the time it takes to fall in the y, and the time it takes to move horizontally in the x are the same. Remember that point, it's important. All right, so for now, I'm going to get rid of our values for the x because we're going to solve for the time in the y. That means we're going to get out our kinematic equations. 
We want to solve for time. Once again, you'll see we've been given three values. We're asked to solve for a fourth. Each of our equations has four variables in it. We need one that has the time in it. This one does not, so we know automatically we cannot use that equation. The other three equations all have the time in them. But in addition to the time, we have to know the other three variables to solve for the time, or to be able to solve for the time. In this equation, and this equation is the final velocity. We don't know the final velocity, therefore we cannot use this equation, and therefore we cannot use this equation. But we have this last equation. We want the time. We know the acceleration in the y direction. We know the initial velocity, and we know the change in position. So therefore, we can use this equation that says the change in position in the y direction is equal to the initial velocity and the time in the y times the time plus one half at squared. Okay. Now another thing we can do to simplify this equation before we solve is you'll notice the initial velocity is zero. That means the initial velocity times the time is also equal to zero. So now we can this term goes to zero and we're going to solve for the time. Now to do that algebraically, I have to get the time by itself, not the time squared. To get the time by itself, time equals, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 first. That'll get rid of my 1 half. And I'm going to divide by the acceleration. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And that will give me that the time is equal to the square root of 2 times the change in position the y divided by the acceleration. I multiplied both sides by t by 2, I divided by a, and then I took the square root of both sides, and that gives me time equals this. Now I can simply plug my values in. Time is equal to the square root of 2 times minus 45, don't forget your negative signs, divided by minus 9.81 meters per second squared, and you get the time that it takes for the object to fall in the y direction is 3.8. 0, 3 seconds. All right. Now, we said that the time in the y and the time in the x are the same. So I'm going to put down that the time is 3.03, .03, and the time in the x is also 3.03. .03. Remember, it's doing both of those things at the same time. All right. Now, you'll notice I know how fast the object is going, 37 meters per second. It's doing that for 3.03 .03 seconds. So I'm going to simply take that the distance, the change in the x, is equal to the speed, or in this case, the velocity times the time. That is, the distance is equal to 37 times 3.03, .03, and that tells me that in the x direction, the object travels 112 meters. Okay, so there you go. That is our final answer for how far the object travels in the x direction, 112 meters. So if we launch an object from a height of 45 meters with an initial velocity in the horizontal direction, in the x direction, 37 meters per second, the object will travel a distance of 112 meters in the x direction. It'll land 112 meters away. Okay, and it takes 3.03 .03 seconds to do that. All right, there you go. I hope you found that helpful. Follow those simple steps. Remember that the acceleration in the y direction is free fall minus 9.81. Remember the acceleration in the x direction because the forces are balanced is zero. Remember the time it takes for the y and the time it takes in the x are the same. All right, and you can solve that problem also. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all of the following three things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a nice thumbs up for this video, and also give me a nice comment. Write me a nice comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.